Welcome back to another segment of Behind the Scenes of the Waltons. Today I'm going to be talking about episode 13 from season 3, The Visitor. If you're enjoying these segments, please do hit like and subscribe. If you'd like to know when I'm going to post another one, which is usually Monday and Thursday, go ahead and hit that notification bell. The Visitor was another episode directed by Ralph Waite. Always a challenge when an actor is also directing that transition back and forth between being behind the camera and thinking about the shots and the actors and crafting all of that and then jumping in front of the camera and taking on that other persona. Uh, that can be a little bit of uh, a challenge, but Ralph seemed to handle it really well. Elizabeth has an imaginary friend, Jimmy, who she takes everywhere with her and she wants other people to interact with Jimmy. And she, um, although she knows Jimmy is imaginary, she still talks with him and treats him as if he is really there. Uh, so we all have a little bit of our own interaction with Jimmy during the course of the episode. And in fact, there was one scene that I thought was really quite cute. Uh, she is down by the creek and she sits in a swing, a, a two-person swing, and the camera is on her when she's talking, and then there's a wonderful moment where Ralph turned the camera around, and it's sort of over Elizabeth's shoulder, pointed at where Jimmy would be. And of course, there's no one sitting on the other side of that swing, but just the representation uh, for the viewer that Elizabeth does, in fact, feel that she's having a conversation, but just to reassure all of us that we are not imagining things and that Jimmy truly is imaginary. The Beardsley cabin, which is quite overrun with weeds and bushes and whatnot, uh, seems very abandoned, but one day as the children are coming home from school, they notice that the door's open um, and they check. No one seems to be around, but shortly after that, they find out that old friends of the family Mason Beardsley and his wife Delia um, are coming back and going to be moving back into the house. Uh, Grandpa and Grandma are particularly excited to have them back because they were close friends of theirs. So uh, we all sort of get volunteered, the whole family goes over to help uh, clean up the place because Mason is pretty overwhelmed by trying to get the place ready. He said he's getting it all ready for Delia to arrive. They've been living down, I believe, in Atlanta, where their son James Lee went, and they moved down there, but now Mason feels like they've been way too long and they want to come back to their own home. The children have run across John Boy as they're checking out the abandoned Beardsley place, and then when they're all heading home, of course, everybody climbs onto John Boy's car. I love how that happens and we arrive back at the house with people just piled all over the car, hanging off the running boards and standing up in the back and kind of I'm half in, half out of the rumble seat. And again, not the type of thing that we would do nowadays, but certainly very common on the Waltons and I think a lot more common in particularly rural areas and of the era. Although being an actor, you might think of as not particularly physical most of the time or a pretty easy job or something, but it's remarkable how often scenes involve doing something physical. You might think of that in action shows where clearly the um, actors in some cases are doing a lot of running or hiking or physical activity. It wasn't so much the case on the Waltons, but we did do our fair share of physical work. Early in the episode, we are washing John Boy's car. So we are actually out there, you know, with sponges and with rags and whatnot and physically doing that. Of course, this turns into a bit of a sibling uh, rivalry thing because I th toss soap suds at John Boy, who then tries to toss them back. Then they're supposed to rinse the car off and Ben has the hose and he starts hosing down John Boy and it gets to be just a free for all. Um, with something like that, where Richard clearly got completely soaked, that would be the last shot of this sequence that they would have done where you would see John Boy, because up until then, anything that you saw, he would have to be dry. 
Once they were going to put that hose on him, there would be no going back without a long delay to dry him off and dry his clothes off. So once that hose got going in every direction, <laughs> then that was kind of the end of any more shooting except uh, any additional shots where we were wet. Because we did not film on actual houses, like real houses, the, the locations we had were on sound stages or they were on the studio lot. So uh, when we are dealing with the Beardsley house, there is supposed to be a well that they are trying to get functioning again. So when you actually see water coming out of that, that would have had to be rigged to have actual water coming out because it was not an actual well. And then inside the house, when they come in and they prime the pump and they get the water running in the kitchen sink, Again, they would have had to rig that so that probably some sort of hose was hooked under there and they could activate it with that pump or the pump wasn't working at all and somebody turned a faucet at the appropriate time or turned the hose on so that the water came up and out. So those were the types of technical things that had to be rigged for non-functioning sets like this. Various people in the family begin to feel that Mason isn't doesn't seem to be fully himself. And their longtime housekeeper, Minnie Doze, comes back when she finds out that Mr. Beardsley has returned and insists on coming back to work and helping ready the house for Delia. She's very excited for her coming back. But she also begins to feel that Mr. Beardsley isn't quite himself. Uh, so there are various people concerned about him. Um, and as it turns out, when James Lee arrives, we find out that his mother, Delia, actually died two years ago. Mason's having a very hard time dealing with that. And so to him, he continues to tell himself that she's somewhere else or she's coming or she will be there soon. So in a sense, not only Elizabeth has an imaginary friend, but Mason has kept Delia alive for himself as well, and sort of has his own imaginary relationship now in the present. The news of Delia's death is particularly hard on Grandma, and it's one of the few times I really remember seeing Grandma kind of break down in a situation. She was always so stoic about, about things, and she didn't show a lot of emotion. She got irritated, and she might shout and stuff like that, but to show vulnerability was not as common for her character. So I thought it was a really um, touching moment between grandma and grandpa. And ultimately, grandpa says he will go talk to Mace. And I think he feels that being contemporaries and being at the point in their life where the loss of a longtime spouse was something that they potentially could both relate to, um, Grandpa decides he will go speak with him and they have a, a very short but poignant scene together and it, uh, it's very impactful for, I think, both of them. And uh, Mason, you know, recognizes that he needs to let Delia go and, you know, sort of move on. And he, he knows she's gone, but he recognizes that he needs to actually acknowledge that for real and move on. We were fortunate to have another couple of fabulous guest stars join us for this episode. John Beale, who played Mason, uh, had a very illustrious career, both on Broadway and in Hollywood. He worked with such stars as Katherine Hepburn, Helen Hayes, Gloria Stewart, and then Madge Sinclair played the Beardsley's longtime housekeeper, uh, Minnie, and she had quite a career as well. She was nominated for an Emmy for the series Trapper John M.D., uh, where she had a, re a regular series role on that. She was nominated for an Emmy for the miniseries Roots, uh, in which our very own Ralph Waite also was seen. She won an Emmy for a show called Gabriel's Fire. And then she went on also to do a couple of different versions, incarnations of the Star Trek series. And um, then unfortunately, we lost her way too young. 
That's what I have for you for this segment of Behind the Scenes of the Waltons about the season three episode, The Visitor. I will be back with more Behind the Scenes of the Waltons and more Ask Judy. And next up, a special tribute for Father's Day. Thanks for watching.